In this morning's A Veteran's Voice, we revisit the Vietnam War through letters, hundreds of them. Barry Bonberg grew up in Shafter and following high school volunteered for the Army, an experience that he documented for nearly two years. But if it wasn't for his daughter, those memories might have stayed locked away forever. A story told is a life lived. Once told, we can let it go. Barry Bonberg loves that quote from the show Outlander. He says it sums up an emotional chapter of his life. Other stuff, I just not real, don't want to really visit too much. It's just, yeah, too hard to maybe talk about sometimes. Barry graduated from Shafter High School in 1966, and following a brief stint working the potato sheds, then enrollment at BC, he volunteered for the military, enlisting in the Army in early 1967. All my friends had already been, had either gone in or were getting drafted. And I just, I just felt like I was doing nothing going nowhere. He was trained in radio and communication repair and was deployed to Chu Lai along the Vietnamese coast, just south of Da Nang in the fall of 67. He had the skills, but that was it. Now we're in Vietnam to do a job and a lot of the testing equipment and replacement parts and everything, oh, we didn't have. Which left him a lot of spare time, so Barry volunteered to be a door gunner in a Huey helicopter. Flew like resupply and medevacs and stuff like that. Not a thought about or a concern about the fear or the, Barry, this is crazy. I remember so many of the hydraulics going out, getting the helicopter caught in treetops, and then after, after several months in country, I stopped flying altogether because it was just too dangerous. Then there was guard duty. I woke up when the guy was pulling his shift and he had unscrewed the caps of all the hand grenades. I go, what are you doing? Oh, I was just bored and you meet some real characters. Barry jotted down many of these stories that were sent home to mom and dad. You'll see your chest that holds all the original letters, 268 letters home. I was in Vietnam for 23 months. They were put in a box that sat in his parents' basement for years until his daughter Erica urged him to do something with them. I showed, she said, and that's when she said, Dad, you, you really need to type these, for goodness sakes, for, for me and for the grandkids. So he began to type out each letter, maybe two or three a day. I'm coming out of that office area, and I'm like this, because it's bringing back things that I have not wanted to think about for a lot of years. Simultaneous attack by the communists on many of the cities throughout South Vietnam. And some things he didn't want to write about, like the Tet Offensive in 1968. Trapped inside the bunker for a long time. I don't remember if it was days or I think it was, you know, maybe a couple, three days. And a lot of other guys were in the bunker and it was, it was terrible. We were, they pretty much leveled our compound. And uh, guys screaming for their mothers. It was those kind of things you just don't forget. Barry says writing these letters at the time allowed him to escape the reality of war. The only blip of time I would get to where I'm out of the war and I'm actually, so I'm focusing back on Shafter and mom and dad and home. And but part of home was also in Vietnam. His brother Bob was in the Marines and the two managed a brief get together. I got, I got permission from my CO. I jumped on a helicopter and I knew right where he was at and went up there. And that was just the beginning. I ran, randomly bumped into five other Shafter guys that I went to high school with. Every single one of them is deceased except for my brother. It, it was like all my, my brother, all my buddies, the guys that I grew up with right in this neighborhood, they were in Vietnam. Transcribing the letters also gave Barry the chance to deal with repressed emotions. Ironically, it came at a time that his daughter was in the battle for her life with breast cancer. My daughter called, she said, Dad, I have a good friend who's actually in my cancer support group who is a published author, and she's willing to completely help you put that into a book. And while the book was coming together, the two were able to take part in Honor Flight in June of 2019. Two previous flights that we had to cancel because she was going through chemo or was too sick from her, her treatment. Mm -hmm. And then we had this one window to where she was feeling really good. It, it was the greatest trip, the greatest father and daughter experience ever. Erica passed away in September of 2020. Although she never got to see the finished version or her dad taking part in two book signings, her courage and insistence provided the motivation that Barry needed to complete this mission. All proceeds are going to Metaviver, a nonprofit breast cancer research support and awareness organization. And he gets a little redemption. We spent decades not wanting to talk about it, decades not wearing hats, decades not, you know, we were pretty shamed, a lot of us. 
we started receiving long overdue honor and respect and, and uh, I don't know, it, it just, uh, it all just kind of came together. His final letter was sent home in September of 1969, even if it took 50 years for others to see it. And if you would like to follow Barry on his journey, you can pick up his book, Dear Mom and Dad, Letters Home from Vietnam. It's currently on Amazon. All the proceeds, once again, go to Metaviver. We'll post this story and a link to that on our website. Turn to 23.com coming up a bit later this morning.